Ah, such a beautiful day, isn't it? It is, until it all goes boom. That's gravity disappearing for just a second. Let's recap the events from the smallest to the largest scale. We'll start with you. Yes, you. If gravity is lost for a single second, unfortunately, you'll most probably be no more. Thing is, gravity doesn't only keep you anchored to the Earth, it also holds all the atoms inside your body together. If this force completely disappears, even for such a short period of time, chances are you'll simply fly apart. Blech. If you don't, then you'll start floating above the ground. Not high, though, because one second isn't enough to fly too far away. If the gravity stops working only for you, then you'll levitate a little over an inch upwards and then fall back without consequences. Your thoughts will be occupied by the lack of oxygen in your lungs, though, because with no gravity, your blood will stop pumping. Now, if it affects the surrounding objects as well, you'll be lucky to be away from home because everything around you will float too. And after a second, all your cutlery, your bed, your wardrobes, etc. will smash down on the floor. Luckily, buildings and trees will probably stay put because they're strongly rooted in the ground by their own means. Still, the picture won't be pretty, and it'll be up to you to clean that mess. Ah, shucks. By the way, you surely know our planet is spinning and hurtling through space at mind-blowing speeds. So there's a chance that if gravity does turn off for a second, everything on the Earth's surface will succumb to inertia and fly horizontally at several hundred miles per hour. That will be an even bigger mess. But only if everything retains its mass. If it doesn't, then it should be no problem. Maybe. Yet, the real trouble starts if the gravity disappears for the entire planet. The force of gravity is equal to the pressure from inside the Earth. And if the outside pressure is gone, nothing will stop the molten innards of our planet from bursting onto the surface. An immense earthquake will begin all over the Earth as the tectonic plates move upwards. Also, all the world's volcanoes will probably erupt too since the lava will be pumped up with the pressure. If such a mega-eruption occurs, no life will survive except the sturdiest of creatures, such as tardigrades. The clouds of volcanic ash will spread across the whole planet, blocking the sun. At first, the temperatures will rise due to the greenhouse effect. But then the planet will cool down, and a new ice age will begin. Optimistic. This will all happen even if the gravity returns after a second, because the motion will already start and it'll take a more powerful force to calm it down. Up above, the atmosphere of the Earth will simply evaporate. The air we breathe is also kept around the planet by the force of gravity. So if it pops, we'll have nothing to fill our lungs with. Hmm. When the gravity comes back in a second, the atmosphere will eventually gather itself back, but the damage will have been done already. It will take a lot of time for the air to return to its original composition. Meanwhile, in space, things are even worse. As far as we know, everything in the universe is held together by gravity, including other planets, stars, galaxies, and even galactic clusters. On a cosmic scale, our planet is but a fleck of dust, having a really tiny mass. The Sun is incredibly huge by comparison. It's 109 times bigger in diameter and over 300,000 times more massive, which is why its gravity is able to keep so many planets in its orbit. And now that enormous force is just poof! Even though it's only a second, the immense pressure of gas from inside our star makes it explode, sending a heat wave far greater than anything we've ever experienced in history. Now, the Sun will most likely survive because a second is too short a period of time for the star to inflate too much. But the same can't be said about Mercury, Venus, Earth, and probably Mars too. Mercury, being the closest, will probably be simply incinerated. The temperature on Venus is already extremely high, but it will spike even more, scorching its surface. Good thing it's not inhabited. And bad thing that Earth is. The heat wave from the Sun will probably obliterate our atmosphere first and then do the same with the surface. So, from the looks of it, nothing will be able to survive. Again. Oh well. But that's not even close to the end. Our Sun is one of the smallest stars in the universe, the biggest known one being about 1,500 times larger and more massive. 
If such a giant loses its gravity for a second, everything around it for millions upon millions of miles will simply disintegrate, including other smaller stars. But the objects with the most mass and, as a result, the most gravity are neutron stars and black holes. Both of them are extremely small for their mass, like me. But the pressure inside them is so immense that the loss of gravity for even a fraction of a second might mean a tremendous space explosion. And with a whole second, it's basically warranted. Nobody knows for sure, though, how black holes operate, so there's a chance that something else will happen with them. Or nothing at all. Finally, on the largest scale, if gravity decides to take a second-long break, surprisingly, nothing much will happen. Planets will mostly retain their orbits, although they might change a little bit. And if we talk about galaxies or galactic clusters, those won't even notice anything. The biggest changes will be local because, as I said earlier, stars will explode, and the larger the blast, the more it will affect the neighboring celestial bodies. For example, if a star large enough sends a wave of energy in the direction of our solar system, it might send asteroids flying toward us from the Oort cloud. Those space rocks fall onto the Moon and even Earth quite regularly. But they're mostly rather small. The ones sent to us by a star explosion, however, might be a lot bigger and more dangerous. We will be protected by other planets, but still, the chances of collision will be a lot higher than normal. But who cares, really? We'll be toast by then. Obviously, this is all just speculation. Nobody knows for sure what will happen if gravity suddenly decides to stop working even for a second. What we know, though, is that it can't happen without numerous laws of physics being broken all at once. Scientists are pretty certain such a turning off is impossible altogether. For this to happen, everything in the universe will have to lose its mass first. Mass is the main reason things have gravity. So the heavier the object, the more gravity it has. Even you have it. It's just so small that you can't feel it. But if you were several million times more massive, you'd probably be the center of everyone's attention. Hey, I'd use that opportunity. Okay, picture this. In the not-too-distant future, you're heading out on a space vacation, and you need to decide which items are worth bringing along. But instead of checking the weather forecast, you open a gravity simulator. That's because you need to know how each object will behave on different planets. For instance, should you take this metal shovel with you or not? Well, according to your itinerary, it's going to be a long, long trip. You're planning to visit every planet in the solar system and even a few moons. But due to the difference in gravity on these space bodies, you're not sure how useful some of the objects you're going to bring along will be. Well, let's start with the basics. Tupperware. I don't know about other space travelers, but us Earthlings carry our Tupperware around everywhere we go. And still, if you were to transport it to, let's say, Mercury, it would most likely fly away into the atmosphere. These plastic containers you use to keep your food are too light. And since the gravity on Mercury is two and a half times weaker as gravity on Earth, well, maybe you'll have to fill your plastic containers up before taking them out of your spaceship to have a picnic. If a Tupperware container weighs about a half a pound on Earth, it'll weigh just a quarter of that on Mercury. Now, if we add some bananas, a handful of baby carrots, and two watermelons, then it'll be safe to carry it out of your space vehicle. You'll just have some difficulty making it all fit in in a standard-sized container. But wait! Before you do that, you should know that the atmospheric temperature on Mercury can reach up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit. This means that any plastic container will instantly melt as soon as it gets in contact with the air. It'll burn up all the food, too. You can probably try taking a titanium container, that will work, or just stick to astronaut food. Now, shall we say Venus? Okay, Venus. If you were to take the same empty container to Venus, it would behave similarly to how it does on Earth. This is because Venus is also known as our planet's twin. These two have much in common. For example, almost the same size and mass. And when the topic is gravity, the formula goes like this. The bigger the mass and the greater the density, the stronger the gravity. Venus's gravity is approximately 10% weaker than Earth's. So, yes, you may leave your spaceship with your container, empty or full, and enjoy a beautiful and scenic lunch on the surface of Venus. 
Now, you'll have to figure out a way to eat without taking your spacesuit off, though. The atmosphere of Venus is filled with sulfuric acid, which can irritate your nose and throat and cause difficulties in breathing. Or worse. Much worse. Now, you'll have to forget about taking anything too light outside on Phobos. A little hint for you, it's not a Greek island. Not even Greek yogurt, although it's a cool name. It's actually one of Mars's moons. Here, even your spacecraft would need a little extra help to keep close to the ground. If it weighed as much as a school bus, any regular-sized person could pick it up with just one hand. This is because on Phobos, the inhabitants of Earth barely feel the weight of gravity. And be very careful when jumping around, because one leap and you may fly straight into outer space. Uh, passengers on board the Voyager spaceship, please keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Well, you're approaching Jupiter, a gas giant. A never-ending storm is raging in its atmosphere. Plus, there's no solid surface there, which means no landing for you on this planet. If you look out the window, it might seem that you are moving through a giant cloud. But for the purpose of your experiment, it'll work just fine. Try throwing into the air that baseball you brought along in case you get bored of all the space travel. And measure the time it'll take the ball to hit the surface. If on Earth, the ball will fall at a speed of 32,174 feet per second. On Jupiter, the same ball will hit the ground at a speed 2.5 times greater than that. That's because Jupiter is more than 10 times as large as Earth, and around 300 times as heavy as our blue planet. Now, if you move your spaceship just a little bit to the side, to one of Jupiter's moons, Europa, the situation will be completely different. Throwing a baseball in the air on Europa will mean never seeing it again. Gravity there is almost non-existent, which means that not only a baseball, but even a grown-up person can fly away any second. Now, on the other hand, if you decided to venture out of the spacecraft to explore Europa's gravitational field, why not try to lift the space vehicle itself? On Europa, a regular Earthling can easily lift up to 1,000 pounds, which is the equivalent of a full-size male moose. <laughs> or you can lift a pyramid-like formation of nine regular people. Uh, the choice is yours. When approaching Saturn, be careful. While from afar, Saturn's rings look smooth and solid. From up close, you'll notice that they're made of chunks of ice and rocks floating in space. You won't want to have your spacecraft anywhere near those. There's also no solid surface on Saturn, which makes landing impossible. And the atmosphere is full of ammonia. Keep in mind that it's a pretty inhospitable environment for a human. Now inside the spaceship, you find a collection of sci-fi books, enough to fill an entire bookshelf. Altogether, they must weigh around 400 pounds. Yep, that many books. And like someone with a superpower, you try to lift over 200 pounds of weight at a time. But guess what? You fail! Because Saturn's gravity is too similar to that on Earth. Now in case you got confused with all this gravity talk, when we're measuring gravity, we're speaking about the power of the force by which a planet, or other space body, pulls objects toward its center. So if you need some help in organizing that sci-fi collection in alphabetical order, ask the crew to move the spaceship to a neighboring space body with a weaker gravitational pull. Like uh, Pluto. These days, it's not considered a planet anymore. Just a dwarf planet and one of the furthest from the sun's space bodies. You'll need an extra warm spacesuit to wear there. Pluto is freezing cold and has a tiny surface. It's smaller than Earth's moon. But it's a great place to test your strength. If on Earth it's kind of impossible for a regular person to lift an elephant, on Pluto you'll be able to pick up a baby elephant weighing around 265 pounds. Or even a medium-sized elephant that can be as heavy as 2,000 pounds. On your way back to Earth, you make a pit stop on Uranus. The coldest planet in our solar system has an average temperature of around minus 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you attempt to get out of the spacecraft, you'll freeze mid-movement. Although gravity on Uranus is pretty similar to that on Earth, there's one thing that's very different – time. A two-week getaway on Earth turns into a three-year-long vacation on Uranus. Now, when you get sick of cold planets, you can travel back to warmer ones. <clears throat> Okay, now, Mars is definitely warmer than Uranus, 
but its average temperature is still about minus 81 degrees. On Earth, we only have such low temperatures at the South Pole during the winter. When you land on Mars, you'll start to feel light and strong at the same time. Mars's gravity is about 2.5 times weaker than that on Earth. So in other words, you'll probably manage to lift your own body weight without any difficulty. So all those handstands you've been dreaming of doing, you've found a place to fulfill your dream. You decide to go out for a morning jog for the first time in your life. You put on your headphones and get ready for something hard and unpleasant. But as soon as you go outside, you feel an extraordinary lightness. At first, you enjoy it and speed up, but then you realize that something's wrong. You're running too fast and too easily. You feel like you've just taken off a heavy backpack that you've been carrying all your life. You're so fast, you think you must have a superpower now. But you notice another athlete running as quickly as you. You notice a puddle ahead of you and jump over it. You jump so far and so high, it feels physically impossible. You fall to the ground, shocked. Then you notice there are no scratches on your body and the ground feels lighter. You stop the music in your headphones and turn on the radio. All the news reports say the gravity on the entire planet has decreased by half. Thanks to gravity, we stand on the ground and don't fly away into the sky. This power allows our planet to revolve around the sun and the moon to revolve around us. Heavy things seem heavy because of gravity. And now, something has happened to the Earth's core and the mass of our planet has decreased. This is the reason for the change in gravity. People happily run out of their houses and jump twice as high and further than they used to. Any objects seem twice as light to you. Your body has become lighter, so you can easily stand on your hands. But still, you don't feel like a superhero. You can't lift a car, even if its weight was reduced by half. But now, parkour is easier for everyone than before. Your body's weight has decreased, which means you get less damage when you fall. However, panic quickly replaces the joy of the new conditions. It becomes hard for you to breathe, the same as all other people. The air has become lighter. The updated force of gravity has reduced the air pressure by half. Now you feel like you're at an altitude of 16,500 feet among the streets of a usual town. It's like you're halfway to the top of Mount Everest. The air is no longer as dense, and the main part of it has settled in the atmosphere. In the beginning, everyone experiences massive dizziness and panic. You feel like there's not enough air in your lungs, so you get nervous. To solve this problem, you have to learn to breathe slowly and evenly. Thanks to this, you calm down a bit. Others also learn to be more balanced and don't live in a hurry anymore. All of you experience less stress and enjoy every day. Then scientists create unique oxygen masks. You put it on, take a breath, and a special filter puts pressure on the oxygen molecules, making the air denser. After a couple of decades, people will take off these masks as they'll ultimately get used to the new conditions. New generations will be born with adapted lungs. The Earth's atmosphere is expanding. It seems the sky has risen higher and acquired a darkish hue. Satellites flying around the Earth's orbit are now inside our atmosphere, but the Earth's gravity still attracts them. You see thousands of satellites burning up. Some of the space debris survives the atmospheric shield and falls to the ground. A meteor shower begins. Space trash crashes into houses, roads, trees, and cars. You and the rest of the people decide to wait out the storm underground, in the subway or basements. Fortunately, the shower doesn't last long. People come out of their hiding and look at the sky in surprise. The moon changes its previous position and slowly flies away. Soon, it disappears completely. Our planet is now like a heavy ball in the center of a huge blanket. That blanket is gravity. It bends under the ball's weight. If you put any light object on the blanket, it will roll down to Earth. But if an object is moving at high speed, it will be able to spin on the blanket's edge and not fall into the center. Thanks to such speed, the moon doesn't fall on us, but at the same time, it can't fly away. 
Now that gravity has decreased, the blanket has become twice as loose. The rotation speed allows the moon to fly out of our gravitational field. It just goes into space. People will be able to observe the wandering moon for a long time through telescopes. Meteorites might crash into it. It could also find another planet with stronger gravity and will revolve around this new home. The moon may stay in place, but will be revolving around the Earth at a slower speed. In any case, there will be no more tides on our planet and the sea level will remain the same. In the sea, you can also feel the changes. It's much easier for you to stay on the water and you can swim faster. But the coolest thing is running along the shore. The splashes are floating in different directions so slowly and beautifully. The waves are running on the sand in slow motion too. The weight of cars, planes, and ships has reduced, and so people consume less gas now. You can drive twice as far with a full tank. Fuel transportation is easier, and less energy is spent on flights. Gasoline is becoming cheaper. The decrease in gravity inspires space tourism development. It becomes much easier for people to fly out of the Earth's orbit. Winter has come. You're walking down the street during a snowfall. It seems to you the snowflakes are stuck in the air as they're so slow. You step on the ice and realize that it's almost impossible to walk on such a slippery surface. Your weight has decreased and the pressure of your feet on the ice is twice as weak. You're sliding and can't stop. You often fall, but you don't feel any harm. When the wind is strong, it's hard to stay on your feet. If you jump, you may even fly away. The grip of wheels on the road deteriorates. A driver can no longer brake abruptly. The wheels don't spin, but the car continues to slide for a while. That's why new speed limits are being introduced all over the world. You can still enjoy extraordinary strength and long jumps, but after a few generations, the human body will evolve and fully adapt to these conditions. People and animals will be born taller and bulkier. Majestic tigers the size of a truck are walking through the city streets. Flamingos the size of a plane are flying in the dark blue sky. But the worst thing is that the size of insects has increased too. A regular cockroach can now grow to be the size of a computer mouse and tarantulas become twice the size of an adult palm. At the same time, all living beings become lighter in weight. Humans will become elegant and agile creatures. Our bones and muscles will stretch. The structure of the entire human body will change. We'll become thinner and smoother. Blood in the veins and vessels will flow more slowly and it will greatly impair the brain's work, but only in the beginning. In the future, the body will expand. The brain will increase, as will the number of neural connections inside. The lungs will become more sensitive and spacious people will be smarter and wiser. All devices and materials will be developed according to the new conditions. A cup, a pencil, a plate, phones, and other gadgets. Everything will get lighter and more fragile. If an ordinary person gets into such a world, they'll feel like a superhero. You'll be able to punch through lightweight walls and doors and break bricks with your hand. New people won't match your power, but you'll seem too small and clumsy to them.